In a yawner of a news conference today, Tiff Macklem surprised no one when he suggested they were going to hold the policy rate at 5%. This is the fifth consecutive time that the BOC has held interest rates at 5%. I'm not going to make you wait to get all the way into this video to give you the verdict of my thoughts, but I am going to do that and I want you to hang around because we're going to break down the specifics of what Tiff Macklem said and what it means to you. More importantly, what we've seen recently in the housing market and how that could impact you if you're someone who's thinking about making a real estate decision this year. Now, if you have a variable rate mortgage and you're on the edge, a little bit stressed out and you're wondering, what kind of decisions should I make? Are people defaulting on their loans? What's happening? We're gonna get into those stats as well in this video, so please stay tuned. Right off the bat, let's get into it. Tip Macklin came out today and said they're gonna hold interest rates as they are, no surprise to anyone, and this is the fifth consecutive time in this rate cycle that they've done so. Since there's no surprises, what can we take from this meeting and this information that came out, there's actually quite a bit to chew into here. Some of it was probably not a surprise because it was just conjecturing, but there are some key points to listen into in terms of what TIFF had to say and how it impacts you. So if you have a variable rate or if you want to buy real estate or you're genuinely interested, pay attention here. Now, first and foremost, Governor Tiff Macklem said it's still too early to consider the possibility of lowering interest rates. Now, they did suggest and they admitted that what they are doing is working right now with their common combination of a reduction of inflation, the most recent report coming in January at 2.9%, and with the reduction of a number of different areas, including getting a handle on wage growth and job growth, there are some positive signs that what's happening right now in regards to keeping interest rates high is actually working, at least according to the BOC. Now, what's a really big consideration here is how this affects homeowners right now and the, how they're battling the higher payments and interest rates. Some of the recent stats have come out and suggested that Canadians are becoming more delinquent than ever on their monthly payments. I looked at a stat recently from Equifax, which reported that over a 52% increase in 90 plus days overdue of delinquency on mortgages and a 29% increase on non-mortgage credit. But what can you take from that? The first thing is that most people are hearing 52% increase, whereas the reality is, is the numbers are still at 0.14% of the population, so a very small amount, and 1.3% for non-mortgage. And these numbers are really in line with pre-COVID numbers. So this isn't a massive increase, although the market would suggest that is the case. Now, this year we've seen a lot of Canadians start the process of renewing their mortgages, and some of them renewed earlier this year and last year, and many of them are going from rates of 2.5% to 3.5%. During these timelines, we've seen people have an increase to their monthly payments. And one of the biggest mistakes people are making there is they're just taking a renewal offer and seeing an average monthly payment increase of about $457. We've talked about this in previous videos, and we don't wanna get off track, but there are options to refinance and re-amortize your loan to be able to reduce those payments. And we've seen that number come substantially down for those who've taken advantage of that option. Now back on track with the BOC and what they're planning to do here going forward. Basically, Tiff Macklem suggested that with inflation still remaining close to 3% and their target at 2%, it still could take some time to get the numbers back in line. And they publicly admitted that rent and interest cost is one of the biggest factors right now of inflation, but they also suggested that the core measure that they use as it pertains to understanding the numbers that they're using is CPI trim, which strips out rent and mortgage costs. Publicly, there've been a lot of people who've been addressing this and saying that they're using the wrong measures and they should be factoring in the mortgage and rent costs into these decisions more than they currently are, but they're standing pat on this decision. So bringing it back down to earth, what does this mean for you as a homeowner? If you have a variable rate and you're on a fixed payment, you're probably paying a substantial amount of interest and your amortization might still be extended long past the 30 years you were hoping. A reminder, however, that if and when interest rates go down, that will slowly start to reverse. We suggest those people have a firm grasp on their numbers and their calculation and consider the possibility of making a lump sum payment if there's any concern or stress related to having that amortization schedule. If you're someone who is on an adjustable rate mortgage and you're still making your payments and able to continue to make your payments, then this is a good sign that we're likely to start to see interest rates come down, what is predicted to be April, or June of this year, which leads us into our next point. When are rates going to start coming actually back down? The market would suggest one thing and experts would suggest another, but the highest probability right now is that interest rates start coming down by June of 2024. Although there are a number of economists that are projecting April as the most likely timeline. Although that number is much lower, It'll be interesting to watch what happens over the next couple of months. Will the Bank of Canada decrease rates in April before knowing the federal budget? The interesting thing is that these actually go hand in hand. What the government spends 
has a direct correlation on what the Bank of Canada actually can do. If they spend too much money, well, they have to keep rates high because it floods the marketplace. At the end of the day, I think that we won't see a rate reduction in April for that reason alone, although they would never say that publicly. What does this mean for the real estate market moving forward? Well, we've already seen statistics come in recently suggesting that real estate values are coming up. In fact, BMO just released a report a few days ago suggesting that the bottom is already here and past or here right now in almost every city in the country. Now, there are some subjectivities to this. There are some areas that have their own different economies and things that can happen. But ultimately, this is a really good sign if you're a consumer thinking about getting into the real estate market and looking for opportunities. It's very rare that we see a consensus among economists suggesting that real estate has bottomed out. And maybe that's not the case, but when it's a commonality and it is a consistency, looking at rates being high, nervousness in the marketplace, you can suggest that it's a very high likelihood that we are quote unquote on the bottom. Locally in the Vancouver and the surrounding areas, we are seeing multiple offers and we're seeing it reported in many different cities across the country, such as Calgary, Edmonton, even in areas in Ontario, throughout BC, on Vancouver Island and the Okanagan. And this is another reminder of the fever and the amount of demand that was built up over that period of time. Remember, we still have a supply issue no matter what the government does to actually try to overcome that. So it could be a great time for someone to buy into the real estate market, especially with these most recent announcements around property transfer taxes as a first time buyer or someone who's investing and looking to purchase land at this time right now. As always, you gotta make sure that you're well qualified and you have a long-term plan. I don't think anybody should get into the market for a short-term flip at this point right now, especially with all the taxes that have come out. But at the end of the day, there are huge opportunities. So the final implications of this rate decision may come, but they likely won't come to pass for a few months time. I'd love to hear your feedback. Are you someone who thinks that this is the bottom? Do you think this was the right decision or did they make a massive mistake by holding rates and not going down and seeing more delinquencies? Let me know in the comments below.